So Friday for most of us, unless you listen to the video on another day. <clears throat> um, so normally no props needed today. And we're going to start on hands and knees. <clears throat> so come down onto your hands and knees. Um, let me see if I can put some more light, although it's, it seems to be OK. So come onto your hands and knees. <clears throat> Spread out your fingers and see if you can stretch your thumb out so that they're almost the two thumbs are almost pointing towards each other. And then spread out your other fingers, but not to the point that you cannot push them down anymore. So we really want to put all the weight into our fingers, also into the cushion of each of the fingers. So, and then we want to feel the lightness in the bottom of our palm. So just press your fingers down, press your thumb down, and then roll the eye of the elbow to the front and feel what happens in your shoulder. So you can, if, you're, if your elbows are not stretched out and you just turn, nothing is going to happen into your shoulder. So that's why I want you to press your fingers down, uh, elongate your arms, and then roll the eye of the elbow, so the inside of the elbow forward. And then press a little bit more into your fingers. So the, the heel of my palm is still touching the floor, but it's very light. Take a breath in and I'll see if you can lift the upper part of your spine. So you, you're going to need to push a little bit more. You might feel some stretching in the inside of your armpit. Very strange what we can feel. Take another breath in. So the rest of your body is stable, but you don't have to do too much effort for the moment. Unless, of course, you sink into your, your belly. <clears throat> and then exhale. Let's inhale and this time come a little bit forward. So I'm going to come with my shoulders a little bit ahead of my wrist. So if you have wrist problems, be very mindful of what you're doing. Don't go too far, but we're going to give our, our wrist a little stretch here. So don't fall forward, move slowly, <clears throat> come forward. And then come back. And you might feel good if you just push your hips a little bit back so that you can lengthen in the wrists again. Now we're going to turn the fingers pointing back. So this is going to be a big stretch again in the wrist. So be mindful. If this is not for you, just do the same thing as we just did. So turning both palms <clears throat> so that the fingers are pointing towards your knees. And then now there is quite a lot of weight onto, your, onto the heel of your hand. And then push your hips gently back. So even a bigger stretch into the wrist. So if you have carpal tunnel, we, you absolutely need to stretch your wrists, but you have to be very careful. This is a huge stretch. So you might want to stay with your fingers pointing forward. And then let's come back. Let's come onto our knees and just shake it out a little bit. <clears throat> so good things to do if you're on your computer all day, like making sure you're shaking your hands from time to time. Bring your hands now to the front and this time push your hips back. And so same thing, pushing the fingers down, the thumb and the index, rolling the inside of your elbow to the sky and press your hips back. So finding that length into the spine. See if you can roll the shoulders out for a moment. So widening in the upper back, your head doesn't have to touch the floor. We're just finding that length. And then coming back. And bring the hands again under your shoulders. And we're going to uh, make C's with the, the spine. So look to the right. So uh, roll your head so that you're looking to the right. And then press your right hips to the right. And now go and see if you can see your hips. So I'm making a C curve with my spine. My hips to the right, my head to the right. So my neck is also bend to the side and then coming back. So be very gentle here and then push your hips to the left. Look to the left and then go see if you can see your hips. And then coming back. Press into your hands. 
take a deep breath in and as you exhale start to round your spine so not in a in not in a cat mode just pressing your hands down lifting the belly up rounding the spine just imagine that you see your spine in the mirror and then it's really like a mountain so press your hands down bring your chin to your chest opening the back of our spine and then press your tailbone towards your hands so we're gonna eat we're gonna lower the tailbone and then press the hips forward big round in the spine and then release coming back to neutral take a breath in and this time going into the reverse so just watch out for the lower back here that you don't over compress in the lower back so inhale exhale and then as you inhale drop in the center of your upper body and then lift the tailbone roll the shoulders back and imagine that you're creating a big valley here so looking forward but make sure your neck is long your belly is really heavy pushing down your chest is rolling uh, your chest is open your shoulders are rolling back your neck is open and then with an exhale coming back to neutral spine extend your right leg keep the toes on the floor make sure that your hips remain in position so parallel press your right heel back so really press back and straight leg feel maybe your calf muscles maybe somewhere else and now observe what happens if you lift your hip up or if you lower your hip a little bit bring it back to neutral so hip remains um, parallel with the floor and then coming back and then go to the other side so toes on the floor push your heel back push into your hands so you're probably going to go a little bit backwards with your upper body that's fine as long as the hips remain parallel and your leg is straight and strong your heel is pushing back your toes are on the floor and then coming back we're going to reach the right arm up and press into your left hand so your left wrist is under your left shoulder open up see if you can keep your hips in place for now so really open up lengthening opening up one more breath here and then exhale bring the right arm underneath the left palm is facing up and reach all the way and come down onto your right shoulder right ear or take a pillow if you need to be a little bit higher my hips are still in the center and then your left hand take a breath in and then inhale lift the left arm up so opening the other side keeping the hips in place but the weight is in the right shoulder so if your left hand is disturbing you place it on your lower back for now to keep the focus on opening the right shoulder the back of the right shoulder and then place your left hand in front of your face push yourself up this time right wrist under right shoulder inhale lift the left arm up so watch out in your hips we want to really open the chest lifting the arm up don't throw it back so don't bring it to the side keep it in line with your shoulder press into your supporting arm and see if you can open up a little bit more and let's explore our own body we've been talking a lot about shoulder blades going down getting together so what happens with your shoulder blades in this position if you bring it down you're gonna have a bit more mobility if you bring them together you're gonna have a bit more mobility and then exhale bring the left arm underneath the right palm up come onto your left shoulder left ear and then open up the right arm watch out for those hips inhale exhale and then slowly bring your right hand in front of your face and coming back <clears throat> 
This time we're going to reach the left arm forward. So we're on our right hand, left arm forward. <clears throat> Make sure your chest remains parallel with the floor and then reach your right leg out. So if you need balance, you can keep your right toes on the floor, push your heel back, reach your left fingertips forward. Activate in your hips, activate in your core, reach up, reach forward, sorry, reach forward, reach back. And then with your next exhale, bend your elbow, bend your knee round the spine, bring the knee to the elbow, press into your right hand. And then inhale long, go to the end of the movement. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale long, last time. Exhale, knee to elbow. And then stretch, stretch it out again. Bring the left arm to the left. So keep it at the height of the shoulder and the right leg to the right. If you need more stability, you can put your toes slightly on the floor. Keep on breathing. Lots of core work here. Lift your right leg up a little bit more if you can. And then exhale. Left hand on the floor, right knee on the floor. If you need to shake out your wrists, never hesitate to do that, okay? You just go shake it out. Let's come back. Hand. Make your table beautiful so that you can put morning coffee on it. Reach the right arm forward. So as you do this, don't lean onto your left. So keep really parallel with the, with the floor. And that's the core that's going to do that work. And then stretch out your left leg. So let's take two breaths here, reaching out, activating the core, activating on the right side, your leg, your hips. And then with your next exhale, bend the elbow, bend the knee, knee to elbow three times, inhale, reaching, exhale, inhale, reaching, last time, exhale, and then reaching up, bring the right arm to the side, left leg to the side, opening up, activating your core, keep on breathing, three breaths here, And then inhale, coming back to center and hand down, knee down. Take a deep breath in. We're just gonna do three rounds of cat and cow to release a little bit the tension that we built up through holding. So go at your own rhythm, the rhythm of your breath. As you inhale, tailbone goes up, one vertebrae at a time, open up, opens up towards the front. So imagine your vertebrae opening up. And then exhale, tailbone down, belly button up. Press into your hands, roll the shoulders forward, chin to chest. Two more times. And then coming back to neutral. So if you find your wrists are, are starting to bother you, come onto your forearm. So come onto the left forearm and bring the fingers, the left fingers pointing towards your, the right corner. The right hand can just stay very slightly, very lightly onto the floor. And then lift your right knee, bend your knee, foot is flexed, and start to make little circles with your hips. So we're not gonna go the full range. We're gonna keep the knee bent. So we're just gonna lubricate into the hip a few times. And then changing direction. And then coming back and then changing side. So if you wanna go onto your forearm, right fingers pointing to the left corner, left hand slightly touching the floor. Lifting the knee, flexing the foot, bending the knee, of course, and small circles. And then changing direction. <clears throat> and then coming back to center. 
and relief. Let's walk back, tuck your toes. So if you know your knees are not very happy, put something be between your calf and your thighs and then go sit. So my, my, I'm, my toes are tucked under. My little toe, make sure it's pointing forward and then go sit on your heels. Or of course, if you have something in between, you sit a little bit higher. Let's sit straight here and then inhale, reach the arms up. So don't sink into your body, keep the body um, long and strong and then bend your right elbow, place your left hand onto your right elbow and we're just gonna open the armpits. So push with your left hand onto your right elbow, open your armpit. So we really want to push the elbows back. Take a deep breath in. And of course, exhale in the meantime. <laughs> and then release, bring the hands to the front on the floor and gently tap your toes. And then let's go back. So if your toes are screaming hell now, you might just want to sit onto your heels, but we pay little attention to the toes, especially as we get older. Arthritis is going into fingers and toes at first. Inhale, reach the arms up. So make sure you're sitting straight. If you just sit like this, there's nothing really happening in my body and you put even more weight onto your toes. Lengthening, bending the left elbow, right hand on your left elbow. So first start to push your elbows back and then push with your right hand, the left elbow down. Activating the core. It's gonna help you to take a little bit of weight off your toes. Two more breaths here. And then exhale, release, bring the hands forwards and tap your toes. <clears throat> bring the hands to the front, the knees a little bit to the back. Tuck your toes just for a moment. I know they're thinking that they're going back into that huge stretch, but we're moving into downward dog. So press into your hands, roll the inside of your elbows forward and then start to lift your hips up. So push your heels back, but keep your knees bent, push your hips up. So just to give some relief to your toes, if you need to, instead of coming all the way up onto your toes, you might want to push your heels a little bit more back. So lifting the hips and then start to slowly walk your dog. Very, very gently. Stretching out, we did already some stretches in the legs, so should not feel like a sudden shock, wake up call. And then bend both your knees, lift your hips up, turn the inside of your elbows out, press your heels down, watch your lower back. So you don't want your pubic bone to come close to your belly button. You want to keep your spine neutral so if you feel that your hamstrings are too short, keep your knees bent. Bring the big toes together and now lift the right leg up. Bend your right knee and swing your right foot between your hands. Bring your left knee down. Untuck your toes and come up. Take a breath in and a breath out. We're going to inhale the arms up. Exhale, bring your hands in front of your heart. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn towards the right. And then lengthen out your left arm on the outside of your right leg. And then reach your right arm up. So my arms are remaining in one line. So if you're deeper, you're <clears throat> vertical. Otherwise, any place in between. What we want to do is trying to open the chest, bring this right shoulder back. So press into your left arm, into your left arm, right leg presses back and then start to open up. Inhale, lengthen, opening up. If it's more comfortable, keep your hands here or even on your hip, but work the shoulder out. So roll the shoulder up, 
back and then shoulder blades down. If you need to come up a little bit to have access to your belly so that you can rotate further, go for it. And then slowly coming back, coming back to center, inhale, lengthen, exhale, release into the hips. Stay here for two more breaths. So every exhale, just release, don't do anything. And then bring your hands down, walk your hands back, lift your toes, come on the back of your heel, lengthen out your leg, flex your foot, look forward. So if the floor is too far away and your spine is rounding, see if you can stand in a sort of balance or have two blocks or books to hold you. If you're fine, your spine is straight, you can walk your hands forward. So find that big stretch into the back of your right leg. So keep your hips um, in line. So don't push forward with your right hip just to ease in the back leg. Your left knee is not gonna like that anyway. And then place your right foot back down. So lift your back knee and come into plank. Plank, full plank or plank onto your knees. Take a breath in, press your heels back, roll the shoulders back so you're not sinking in between. So press into your hands, your spine, your neck, everything is in line. Your tailbone goes towards your heels. Your legs are super active here. So my quadriceps are active. My kneecaps are coming towards my hips. <clears throat> and then knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. So chaturanga is a reverse push-up but elbows are moving back. So if you wanna do chaturanga, you're going until the upper arm is parallel to the floor, and then you roll over your toes to come into upward dog. Otherwise you go knees, chest, chin, and then you roll forward to come into cobra, roll the shoulders back, look forward, and then exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath in, find your dog again, walk if you need to, exhale. Bring the big toes together. Take a breath in, exhale, inhale, lift the left leg up. So start already when you're lifting the leg with staying very balanced in your body, your arms, your upper body, and lift the leg up straight and with control, it's not a swing. Bend your left knee and then bring the left foot in between the hands. So here, if you don't reach all the way to the front, place your foot wherever it's gonna touch, grab your ankle and then bring it forward. Exhale, right knee on the floor. Inhale, come up. Exhale, sink a little bit. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, find space, exhale, turn towards the left. <clears throat> this time, right arm comes on the outside of your left leg. So how deep you go, it's really up to you. Don't round your spine. We're twisting, so we need space. We need length. And then your left arm in line with your right. And same thing. So lengthen and see if you can open up a little bit more with the left shoulder, left part of your upper body, opening up. Maybe lengthen a bit more into your belly, opening up. Two more breaths here. And then exhale, coming back. Bring your hands onto your thighs and for three breaths, Let's stay here, sinking into the hips. So just finding that opening in the front groin. And then bring the hands down, walking the hands back, lifting your toes, lengthening the left leg, <clears throat> lengthening the upper spine, the, the spine, the whole spine. And don't let your foot, your left foot just hang here. Make it a 
active flexed foot and then exhale walk your hands to the front bring your hands uh, on the floor lift your right knee and come into your plank so at any given moment if you need a break go into child's pose otherwise plank take the time to find your plank we're gonna do knees chest chin or chaturanga and then inhale cobra or upward facing dog exhale downward facing dog <clears throat> again find your dog if you need a break go into child's pose otherwise enjoy the downward facing dog take a breath in lift your right leg up again and swing your right foot in between your hands. This time, stay uh, onto your toes. Bring your left toes a little bit closer so that your left heel can come onto the floor. <clears throat> and then see if you can stretch out your legs. Your upper back can be rounded, that's fine. <clears throat> so my, I'm not in one line with my feet, they're hip distance width. If, you're struggling to keep your hands on the floor, come higher, but see if you can let go into your spine, into your head. The inside of the front foot presses down. See what difference that makes for your stability. Press the back heel back and then press the knees back. Inhale, exhale, letting go again. Nice stretch into the quads. And then lift your back heel, your left heel. Walk your hands a little bit more to the front. Bend slightly in your right knee and lift your left leg up. And so lift it straight. You can keep some bend into the right knee for stability. It's a forward fold. So again, we're letting go of the head, the upper body, the, back, the leg that's in the air. Press it away but keep your hips in line. So you're not opening to the side, your hips are facing down. And then exhale, take a big step back, place your left foot on the floor, toes pointing to the long side of your mat and your heels are in one line. My right knee is bent and then windmill your arms into your warrior two. Inhale, exhale. Come a little bit deeper. Turn the front palm up, so the right palm, and come into your warrior four, dancing warrior, opening up to the, <clears throat> to the back. The right side is nicely opening here. One more breath. And then exhale, windmill the arms back down, lift your back heel, place your hands down, come into your plank. So if you wanna skip, Cobra, go into downward dog or child's pose. Knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Find your dog or join us if you were in child's pose. Inhale, lift your left leg up and swing your left foot between your hands. <clears throat> Bring your right foot a bit closer until you can press your right heel down and have both your legs straight. So again, if you need to come higher, if you have blocks, use the blocks. Drop your head, let go in your upper body, keep the hips parallel with the short side of the mat. Inhale, exhale. And then lift your back heel, gently bend your front knee, your left knee, walk your hands forward, and then start to lift your right leg up. So strong leg, press your heel back. Look at your toes. If they're pointing out, you're opening the hip. So we wanna keep the hip parallel to the floor. And then start to fold forward, maybe a little bit more as you lift your right leg up. <clears throat> And then with your next exhale, bend your front knee 
And take that big step back, heels in one line, right toes pointing towards the long side of your mat, left knees bent, and a windmill yourself up into your warrior two. Look at the front hand, at the left hand, bend your front knee a little bit more. Make sure your hips are parallel with the long side of the mat. Turn the front palm, the left palm up, and then open up the left side. You can look up, you can look to the side whatever is comfortable for your neck, reaching up. Bend your knee maybe a little bit more. And then exhale, warrior two. Inhale, lift your back knee up, your back heel, sorry. Reach your arms up and then bring your hands back down, back into your plank. Knees just chin or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. <clears throat> We're moving into pigeon pose. So if you know your knees are not happy doing pigeon pose, move onto your back. Lift your right leg up, bend your right knee. And now bring your right knee behind your right wrist. And there was a question the other day, where should my, I'll go onto the mat, where should my lower leg that's bent, where should that go? Um, should it be parallel with the front of the mat? Eventually, yes. But for that, you need a very flexible hip, otherwise the knee's gonna take everything. So <clears throat> you do your best depending on how your hip is built. See if you can bring that right knee, maybe just outside of your right hip. <clears throat> and then flex your right foot to protect the knee. And then eventually we'll be moving the lower leg more and more parallel with the front of the mat. So the most important thing is do not hurt your knees. So walk your right leg back. Untuck your toes. So don't sit onto your toes. That's a lot of tension. This pose is opening your hips thanks to gravity, thanks to letting go. So we don't want to hold anywhere. That's why if you feel that you're falling on one side and you have to hold up, nothing's going to relax. So put a pillow, a blanket or something wherever you need it. Take a deep breath in, look forward. And then exhale, roll yourself down. So whichever height you reach, make sure you don't bend into your neck. So keep your neck long. Make maybe a pillow with your arms or take a block or reach your arms forward if you can really go down. And then let's stay here for five breaths, releasing in the hips. So just observe for a moment. Are you holding anywhere? Are you afraid that you're going to suddenly sink in and hurt yourself. If, if that's the case, put something soft to support you. So there is still some give in. If you put something soft, if there is a block, it just stops, the movement stops. Last breath, unless you want to stay longer, enjoy this pose. And then place your hands underneath your shoulder, press yourself up, tuck your back toes very slowly, bring the right leg back and come back into your downward dog, but take your time, like we're unwrapping our right leg, our right hip. Inhale, beautiful downward dog, be happy to be back. Eventually, downward dog is going to feel like home. But stay curious. It's like when you arrive home and you open the door, you never know what you're going to find, even if it's your home. Lift your left leg up. Bend your left knee and come forward. Bring that left knee behind your left wrist. So depending on how wide your arms, your hands are, you might want to move your left knee a little bit more out and then lengthen your right leg. 
flex your left foot. Maybe you can bring that leg a little bit high, that lower leg, but don't force it. It's gonna come maybe in the next life, who knows? And then lengthen out that back leg. That's really what is gonna help you to come down. Place your hands on the floor, open up. Check already, do I need some support? Am I already holding here somewhere in my hips? Am I falling over? Take the time to know which support you need so that you can have them ready next time. And then make a pillow with your arms or use a block or come all the way down, but don't create too much of a bend into your neck. If you need to be higher, just bend your elbows and stay here. So I'm not, I'm still opening my hip. I'm maybe not 100% relaxed but I'm still, I'm not holding anywhere. I'm just supporting. <clears throat> so three more deep breaths in and every time you exhale, see if you can let go a little bit more into your hip. And then with your next inhale, coming back and go for the last downward dog of this practice. Slowly coming up, unrolling your left leg, lengthening the spine, maybe walking, dancing, or just finding peace into your downward dog. And then exhale, come onto your knees and bring your legs forward. <clears throat> so I suggest that you sit onto something unless you are very straight and capable of keeping the upper body square 90 degrees with the legs. But most of the time we are falling onto our um, sitting the back of our sitting bones. So sit on the edge of something and then place your hands at the height of the hips, just a little bit outside of your mat, maybe depending on how long your arms are. And then just walk your heels forward. So you're gonna feel that you kind of roll off your support. You're, you're sitting on the edge, but it's gonna make that you're gonna sit on the front sitting, sitting bones. So you don't wanna be too high. If you're really high, then you're gonna stay fully seated onto your height. Your feet are slightly separated. My feet are flexed and my legs are so strong that maybe even my heels are lifting. So that's how strong my legs are. Take a breath in, reach your arms up. So now I'm adding all that action in my upper body. So imagine you're standing in Tadasana in mountain pose, except there is a 90 degree bend in your body now, but it's the same work that's done here. Take a breath in and then exhale, bring the hands to the side. Place your hands on the floor on a block or come onto your fist, but don't reach your shoulders up. You wanna have long arms. You wanna have a, be able to push into the floor. So press into the floor and maybe lift your bum up. My legs are still very strong. Lift your bum up. Roll. So don't start to round your upper back. So roll the shoulders back, lift up, activate into the core. And then come back down. And then we're gonna lift the right leg up. So again, don't start to compensate with your upper body. So if you need to keep your hands onto the floor, so lift your right leg up, press your heel away and come down, feeling it in the quads. Lift your left leg up, long upper body. So eventually we'll do that with the arms up, which is even more difficult. We won't do it today. And then bring it down, reach your arms up. Feet are flexed. Take a breath in, lengthen your whole spine, your, the sides of your body are lifting up and then exhale, bend forward from the hip crease. So there's no need to go and kiss your toes now. We wanna just bend in the hip crease. 
reach your arms up. They're still next to my ears. And then exhale, wherever your hands are gonna touch. Hold on. That can be at your thighs, can be at your tibia. Don't hold on to your knees, please. And then inhale, lengthen the spine. See if you can go and find a little bit more of that tilt so that you can reach in your hip crease. Lengthening, exhaling. Maybe walk your hands a little bit more forward. If you used to work with a strap, you can always work with a strap. Advantage is that your spine is gonna remain straight because you're gonna bend your elbows. But we said no props today. Inhale, lengthen. Maybe you can reach your toes, maybe not. So keeping the spine long, I always, as I inhale, wanna lengthen in my spine and exhale, just going a little bit deeper in my hip crease. My legs are still straight. Maybe you're much higher and that's fine. Everybody's where they are today and tomorrow. Inhale, exhale, and now start to round your spine. If you need to bend your knees, bend your knees a little bit. But if you can keep your legs straight, see, rounding the spine just slightly. Don't create any sensations in the lower back. We're just trying to find a bit more length by going down and then lengthening out again. Two more breaths here. Eventually, maybe <laughs> it's gonna be comfortable. And then slowly place your hands next to your legs. Walk your hands back and come all the way up. Bring your hands in the back, open your legs as wide as your mat and shake it out. <clears throat> so just to help a little bit in the lower back and then we'll finish. So your feet as wide as your hips. Your hands are at the back, your fingers are pointing forward. Roll the shoulders back, gently bend your elbows here. It's gonna help you to lift up. So we're going into reverse tabletop. We're gonna really try to find that length into the spine. So press into your hands, press into your feet and start to lift your hips up. Press your knees forward, but don't pass, don't move your whole body forward. If you just wanna create that length, you can drop your head if that's acceptable for your neck. Otherwise, just keep your neck in line, open your shoulders, press into your hands. If your hands like this are not comfortable, come down, turn them towards the back, your fingers. Don't go to the side, then nothing really happens in your shoulders. So opening the front of our shoulders again, giving a bit of relief to our spine and then slowly coming back. Let's bring the feet as wide as the mat. Keep your hands in the back. This time, roll the shoulders back and then roll your knees over to the right. So my left knee comes behind my right heel. I'm trying to press my right knee down. My left hip can lift. So creating a little bit of a rotation and then press into your right hand. See if you can push your right shoulder forward and bring your left shoulder a little bit more back. A very subtle movement here, just to open a bit in the hip and then coming back, bringing everything back to the center. <clears throat> Take a breath in, lengthen your spine and then bring the knees over to the left. So right knee behind the left heel, maybe they don't touch, maybe they do, maybe they're on the floor, maybe they're not. Press into your left hand, lengthen, your left arm, push your right shoulder back, your left shoulder forward, opening up, gentle twist into your upper body, lower body, depending how your hips are feeling. And then coming back down. Let's bring the soles of the feet together <clears throat> and then slowly roll yourself down. So keeping the soles of the feet together, maybe you wanna bring your feet a little bit closer. So I'm gonna give you a couple of options here. You can um, be in your beginning of Shavasana like this, or you can cross your legs and be in uh, a cross-legged position, which we will change after <clears throat> five breaths. 
So see what you're at today. If you prefer to stay with your feet to get your feet, um, the heels, the heels, the soles of your feet together and just have your knees fall out or crossing the legs. So let's take three more breaths in the position you're in. And then bring your arms in Shavasana. So your arms can already start to really be in Shavasana. See if you can roll the outside of your shoulders a little bit more to the floor so that your chest is relaxing. So if you have crossed your legs, let's change the way you cross. So bring the left in front of the right or the right in front of the left and then let it drop again. If your soles of the feet are together and your thighs are becoming tired and come into your Shavasana. So three more breaths here before we all move into full Shavasana. And then slowly bring the knees back up. If you're not already in full Shavasana, with your feet still on the floor, lift your hips up and see if you can really press your lower back down. So cur um, rounding in the lower back so that we can find relief for the lower back and then stretch out your left leg, your right leg, drop your feet out and come into your Shavasana. Today, just focus on the breath. With every exhale, feeling the release. And then understand that the inhale is always automatically gonna come. That's part of our nervous system, part of many things we don't control in our body, except with the breath, we can bring a certain amount of control. We can lengthen, we can deepen, we can shorten, we can break it in little parts, we can hold the breath but we will always breathe until our last one. And that is part of life from the first till the last. And then if you're ready to come out again with the breath, take a long breath in. This time, fill up your lungs as much as you can without strain. So you don't want to like this. You want to get a fluid inhale all the way up. Fill your chest filling up. Fill all the little parts of your body filling up. And then open your mouth and exhale, release. Just let it go. Moving the toes, the fingers, the nose. Gently rolling the head from side to side. Maybe there's other part of your body that you say, okay, I need to bring them a bit back to reality. And then bring the legs together. Take your breath in, stretch your arms up and overhead. Hold on to your hands or your wrist or so that you can stretch, press the right leg out, stretch the whole right side and then stretch the whole left side and then stretch the whole body by pressing and pulling, taking another deep breath in and then exhale, bring the knees into the chest. And then gently roll over to your right side and coming up into a comfortable seated position. Bring your hands onto your thighs, maybe just observe how you feel.
And then hands in front of your heart in any way that is comfortable for you now. Take another breath in, lengthen your spine and then exhale, bring the chin just slightly down. Thank you all for sharing your practice, for being there, for showing up for yourself. Through our yoga practice, we are bringing more calm within ourselves, physically, but also mentally. And when we're calmer within ourselves, we radiate that outside and we bring calm and peace outside. So the beauty of yoga. Thank you. Namaste.